you from my Sussex County hauntings and other strange phenomena book too. In this particular book, although I have really good ghost stories from around the county that people have shared with me, I also have other chapters on other strange phenomena and they uh, particularly one that I'm going to be reading from today is the chapters on when loved ones visit, deceased loved ones visit. Loved ones visit us all the time, but not everyone notices it. Why don't my mother and father come to visit me, my husband, Steve, complained. Because you aren't openly receptive to it, I told him. He huffed and walked out. I previously mentioned my father, Carl, passed away in 1994. I was already pregnant with my first child at this time, but unaware. Still, it was difficult processing the fact that none of my children would meet my dad. I was in hard labor for over 24 hours in April 1995. The baby turned her body at the last minute and ripped me open, causing hemorrhaging. I bled hard and lost blood at a tremendous rate. I vividly recall the doctor frantically calling for assistance. I can't stitch her up quick enough, he asseverated. I can't even see what I'm doing. Don't leave me, Steve whispered desperately into my ear. Please, don't leave me. I could feel myself getting colder and colder, fading in and out. Even though everyone was panicked around me, I felt my father with me. Everything's going to be okay, Steve, I mumbled back. And it was. A hundred stitches and totally restructured vagina later, I ended up having to stay in the hospital a week to recover. They were treating my delivery case like a C-section. Walking and moving around was rough, but I joyfully welcomed the experience as a new mother. Victoria Lee and I bonded immediately, and I cherished every moment and memory made with her. One of my favorite things to do was dim the lights and slowly rock her in my arms. I could look at her beautiful, sweet face all night. One night, while we were having our mommy and me time, I noticed smoke wafting in through her slightly ajar bedroom door. The fear of a fire overwhelmed me. I stood with the baby in my arms and rushed to the door to scream down to my husband. Strangely, the hallway was devoid of any smoke. I turned around to look behind me. The smoke swirled in the room, whisking its way through the outer wall. In that moment, I knew it was my dad. Steve appeared, and I relayed what transpired. I don't know. Are you sure it was your father? He worriedly asked. I think maybe we should call a priest to exercise the place. Steve, I said firmly, we're not exercising my dad. But my husband was really unnerved. It continued to bother him for weeks. Daddy, I prayed next to Steve, tossing and turning in bed. You know, I'm thrilled you came to visit, but I think it's better if you come to me in dreams rather than how you did tonight. It makes Steve really uncomfortable. From that point on, I only saw my father when I slept. However, I often smelled my dad's sweat with familiarity at the most arbitrary of moments. It was his way of letting me know he was with me, always. A reader shared with me she smelled marijuana several days after her brother Robbie passed away. He smoked daily. Another reader told me her brother's father-in-law, deceased 18 years, woke her up to check on her niece because he was afraid she was going to fall out of bed. In recording these private personal accounts, it's my hope I grasp the essence of those special heartfelt moments when a lost loved one visits after their departure, departure from life. And so, the rest of that chapter contains other stories from other readers who shared them with me. So it's not just about ghost stories, where everybody likes a good ghost story anyway. The other strange phenomena chapters add a nice little touch. I hope you'll choose to read it. And thank you for joining me today.